Hello guys, um, today we're going to talk about part one of the ser of the Goosebump episodes of Attack of the Mutant. Um, this one aired on September 7th, 1996. It has a 7.1 out of 10 on IMDb with, with about 100-ish user votes. It stars uh, Dan Wary Smith, who was in The Long Kiss Goodnight, and Melissa Bathory, who was in, who had some voiceover work at Magic School Bus. And... It was directed by the great William Freight, <laughs> who did The House by the Lake. Alright, now this part one. This is comic booky horror. And I admire that. And it has a really strange style. Like, on one hand, the book itself, like, in terms of that thing from the... I'll save that for part two, but it it's good. I wouldn't call this great. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that it's not really it's not really scary, but it is interestingly intense cuz you do wonder what's going to happen and you do wonder what what's it is probably one of the more original takes on the story. And it's interesting that the the character in question, the 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 one that everyone loves, is a villain, and that's very horror. But they're talking about superhero comics, not horror comics. That's interesting that I found. Um, in terms of the technicalness of the episode, um, there's a real artsy to it. And I give them props. They really try to bring the designs of the book to life, and they do a great job with it, actually. Um. I'm unsure on some shots whether they were real or fake, but there are definitely shots that felt real, and there are some shots where I'm like, is this shot, it's kind of shot a little weird. Um, it's definitely atmospheric. There's some great shots in part one, too, and there's some good build-up, too. Um, yeah, um, acting is actually pretty solid in this. Um, kid acting's fine, adult acting's fine. Since this is kind of, this is... When I say comic book, I mean like old school comic booky vibe, kind of a little over the top, a little cartoony. But since, but when they add the horror element to it, it feels more balanced out, and it feels more. It doesn't feel too in your face. There's kind of a yin yang to it, kind of deal. Um, but yeah, I do like I do like how I do like the cinematography is good, acting is good, the music. Um, I think the music was fine. I don't remember it being that super... I don't remember it being that memorable. Um, it had some moments, and I can't, I can't remember for sure. It was, I guess it was fine. It didn't really strike me all that. The real thing that really struck me about this, it's the style. The style really sticks out in this episode. And, yeah, that's really all I can say about it. I mean, it's not really... I mean, is this William Freight's best part two multiple parter works? Eh, no. I think, I think he was kind of given, I felt like they do kind of, I think they could have gone a bit scarier. I didn't, I felt like they could have been a bit more tense. I think maybe a little less camp, but I don't mind camp when horror is involved. So that's kind of, it's kind of like horror camp for kids. And with that in mind, they actually do a pretty decent job with it. So, I not really a lot of complaints. Um, it's good. I've seen better. But what really makes this stand out to me isn't really, like, if it's scary or not. But it's really more with how unique, how it's stylized is a good positive. And all the other technical elements, they, they match up fine. I think the weakest is probably music because I can't remember how the score was. I think it was alright. It fit the episode well. I didn't think... But it didn't really wow me at, at really any moments either. Um, but yeah. Um, it's a, it's a, I say it's a good watch. But I'll get more into that in part two. But yeah. Um, thanks for watching. Um, Please subscribe and like the videos. Tune in tomorrow. I'll have part two and we'll talk more about part two and the overallness of it. And yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good day.